Hey kids, Mr. Hammond here. Uh, today we're going to be learning about the seasons and we're going to be talking about the revolution of the earth around the sun. So to get started, you want to turn your uh, notebook sideways. Some people call that landscape. And then in the very center, you want to draw a small circle for the sun. Here's my sun. I'm going to go ahead and give it some rays. We're going to try to do a little bit with perspective. Perspective is the idea that, <clears throat> excuse me, those objects that are close to you, closer to you appear larger, and those that are, are uh, far away appear smaller. So we're going to start by drawing a big old earth because it's closer to us. So my earth is going to be right here in the front, right below the sun. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put a tilt to that earth. So I take my trusty ruler here. And I try to get it in the middle as best I can. Sometimes it helps to put a dot in the middle. So let's put a little dot. Tiny little dot. There we go. I'm going to draw a little line up at the top. My north pole. My south pole. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I've got to remain kind of sideways. I'm going to, if you'd like, sometimes what I do is I draw a line down the middle, but across the middle, I should say. I'm making the equator, but I'm going to make it look like a sphere. So after I draw that line, I can then draw my smiley face in the front and the back, my dash frown. What that helps show is that this is a sphere. So now we got the Earth. Of course, we have the Northern Hemisphere up here and the Southern Hemisphere down below. We are, of course, in the Northern Hemisphere. Now I'm going to take a medium-sized circle. I'm going to use the outside of this guy. I don't like drawing the outside of things. It's easier to draw the inside. But What are you going to do? There we go. I'm going to do this on each side because these are directly across from each other. And these are going to be the four places, we're kind of like taking a snapshot of the Earth, stopping at four different places around the sun. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with this one. I'm going to keep the slant the same way, so I line it up with my first Earth. And then I go down, I find the middle point. There's the middle. Keep the same angle. I may have made my angle a little extreme. Here's the north, the south. Do the same thing I did before. I'm going to put a line down the middle or across the middle, perpendicular to the north and southern pole. There we go. It's perpendicular. And then I draw my happy face and my frowny dashed face. And get rid of my line after that. Do the same thing over here. Keep the direction the exact same. Line that up, yep. My dot in the middle, yeah. North, south. Do a line across. You don't have to do all these steps if you start to get comfortable with what you're doing. And you think you know how to do it without the line, then go for it. All right. And then in the back, since it's really far away on the other side of the sun, we're going to make it kind of small. So I'm actually going to make it like it's way off in the distance. Okay. Get my angle again. South. North. I'm gonna wing it. Well, eh, I'm not gonna wing it this time. If I do, and I'll probably mess it up. There we go. Okay, so there are my four Earths. So these are four places the Earth. It's not really stopping, but it's like we've kind of caught the Earth at these four different places. And we're gonna talk about how these represent kind of the um, beginning of each of the seasons, the four different seasons. So over here on the right hand side, we're gonna start with summer. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why this is summer. Because in the summertime, and we're looking at it from a northern hemisphere standpoint. So from where we live. This would be reversed if we were actually in the southern hemisphere. 
But when the Earth is tilted towards the Sun, the North Pole is tilted towards the Sun, then the Sun is giving more direct rays to the Northern Hemisphere, and the rays are less direct to the Southern Hemisphere. So it's hitting it like head on, which means it's going to heat up a lot more. So the summer solstice actually begins on June 21st, most years. And that's called the summer solstice. And that's the day of the year when we have our longest day, we have our shortest night, and it's actually not the hottest time of the year. The hottest time of the year is actually going to be in August because even though we have long days, the Earth has enough time to heat up. Kind of like think of a pool. A pool needs a bunch of warm days before it actually gets warm enough to swim in. Same thing with the Earth. Over the next month, the rest of June and into July, it's really going to get hot because the Earth will have these really long days where it's getting more sunlight, more direct sunlight, and that's heating up the atmosphere and the Earth itself until it's super hot. And then August, when we get ready to come back to school, it's sweltering. Okay, now I'm on the side, I'm going to draw what the sky or what the sun would look like in the sky. So the sun during this time period, if, if I was looking at the sun's path across the sky, it goes high in the sky. Or it would appear high in the sky. Because we're tilted towards it. So this would be noon right here. Morning and evening would still be low, you know, but at noon, the sun would be directly overhead because we're tilted towards it. Okay, this next one, so from summer, after summer, we run into August and September, so we head into fall. We always go counterclockwise, and this is called the fall equinox. You can see the word equal, okay, we're kind of like equal way between summer and, and uh, winter. That's on September 22nd, most years. Okay, and this is when we have uh, equal night, equal day. See where we get the equinox? So you have 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of night. Now, why is that the case? Because we're not tilted towards or away from the sun. We're kind of to the side of the sun. So we're not really getting direct rays or indirect rays. Again, remember, these are the direct ones because they're hitting us directly. And these are indirect. So from there, now we're heading over to winter which is why I'm making this video right now. And at winter, it's called the winter solstice. And that's on December 22nd. Okay, that's when we have the longest night and the shortest day. Maybe we should add that. Longest night. shortest day. And again, usually December 22nd isn't the coldest because the earth is still kind of warm. It actually ends up being like January and February that gets really cold because now we've got these short um, days and long nights and it takes a while for the earth to really cool down and get cold. Now the sky or the sun in the sky appears much lower during this time. At noon you'll actually see the sun in the southern portion of the sky. And that's because we're tilted away from the sun. And this would be noon here. Okay? Looks like my notebook's kind of moving. Okay, finally, let's move into after winter. We come into um, spring. This is going to be the spring equinox. And that occurs on March 20th. Okay, 
Again, that's going to be equal day. And equal night. Both of them are 24 hours. All right, and then from spring, we go back into summer. So the world's moving counterclockwise around the sun. Um, the equinoxes have equal day, equal night. Summer has long days, short nights. Winter is the exact opposite. Short nights or short days, long, long nights. It's all about the tilt. See, when we're tilted towards the sun, we get direct light. In winter time, we're tilted away from the sun. In this case, the southern hemisphere is getting direct light. We're getting indirect. Which makes things really interesting because this is kind of an interesting fact. Um, our summer is South America's winter, and our winter is their summer, which is why the flu vaccine, they give us a flu vaccine in the winter to get us ready for the flu virus. And then the Southern Hemisphere finds out what our flu virus was like, and then they make their vaccine off of our flu virus for their winter. So it's like in the summer we're preparing for the next flu season by looking at the other hemisphere to see how the flu was there, which is kind of fun to think about how that works. Um, for a title of this, let's just call this Seasons. Here we go, Seasons. And then in parentheses, I'm going to put, or quotations, all about the tilt. It's all about the tilt. All right. Thanks for joining me. Go ahead and get this taken care of. Uh, I'm going to quickly color it in just for fun.